This is the article here. It just says updated Sony A9 offers powerful pro level customization. Um, I'm just going to pull the volume down on these a bit. One, two. Yep. Um, so basically this article, which is on DP Review, um, had it was talking about the way that you can set this camera up to do multiple things very, very quickly. Now, I'll explain why this is important to me. As a wedding photographer who does fusion, which is a mixture of stills and, um, and video at the same time, sometimes it's incredibly hard to, to do settings, even if I'm just doing a wedding for filming, uh, for photography, sorry. If, for instance, say I'm in the church and I want to grab uh, images of um, the groomsmen waiting for the bride to come down the aisle way, things like that, I will usually want to be on not continuous focus. I'll, I'll tend to just have it on single when I'm doing that uh, and then basically uh, only change to continuous when the bride walks in down the aisle. So there's a few issues that I have to do now with my camera. It's very, very hard in, in a uh, extreme situation where you, you've got no time to actually immediately go into your menu, start playing around, and then try and change from single point focus into continuous focus, and you're just muddling around with the menus. It, it, it's actually quite awkward with the A7R 3 and the A6500 and, and cameras like that. Admittedly, the A9, you've got the dial on the top, but it's still something that you've got to keep changing. And for instance, if you wanted to change ISO, shutter speed, uh, things like that as well, you have to immediately go back and change all those settings inside the menu system, which can be quite cumbersome. Well, this camera apparently has a mechanism where you can just press a button, and when you press that button, you can save it onto one of the custom buttons on the camera, it will change all of the settings. So what we're talking about here um, is, for instance, you can change things like ISO metering mode, focus mode, focus area, and your AF on. Now it's saying that this function instantly overrides the camera settings. So for instance, if you wanted to change the shooting mode, aperture, shutter speed, drive mode, exposure, compensation, ISO metering, focus mode, focus area, etc., you can actually save this on a custom button. So it might be that say for instance, uh, you wanted to have very, very slow shutter for, say, the, the groom because the lighting was fairly bad. You also want to be on single focus um, and you, you wanted a more of a high ISO. You could put those settings in to your normal exposures. Then you could set up on a custom button, continuous focus, tracking, um, the drive mode, what shutter speed you wanted, the aperture, everything all set on that. It could even be that, for instance, if you were shooting in the church and then as your bride is walking outside the church, obviously it can be dimly lit inside the church, as you move out well, and to a bright sunlight, you could have a setting that's already set, which would immediately override all those settings and you could set things like your aperture, your shutter speed and ISO and everything else without having to go into menus and change custom buttons. So. That really interests me. Um, I think that might be a really, really good feature to have. And if I don't get the A9, I'm just hoping that this is in the new A7R3 or the A7 II, whatever is available. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that feature. Do you think that would be uh, worthwhile, guys? Um, chime in on the chat too, and we can have a we can have a talk. Um, now they're saying here that also. Um, the Sony A9 on the other hand affords you three banks to allow you to quickly switch between three different commonly accessed operating modes with the utmost of ease. So it looks like all of its memory and everything can be very easily accessed. Uh, now there's a feature here that will tell you everything that you can actually change. Uh, this, the top one, if you go to this article, will show you um, the recall bank on the A7R2 and this other article will tell you what it will change uh, just for the A9, and there is a lot of actual uh, additional uh, things that you can actually change for these banks. So I, th I think that's gonna be an amazing thing to have um, as a wedding uh, you know, photographer. We, we, like I said, you can be changing from extremes of going, say, inside the uh, wedding venue to outside the wedding venue, and you just haven't got the time to, to sort of change anything. You could just hold the button down. While you're holding that button down, those new settings are in action. When you take your finger off, it will change uh, back to uh, the other settings. So you could be, say, shooting um, just single frames uh, with the button uh, not on, and as soon as you press the button down, you could be doing continuous uh, 
frames per second as well as continuous autofocus and auto ISO. So I think that's going to be a great thing to have. Uh, let me just see what Marcus is saying here. Oh, I actually insure mine through uh, a local company, Marcus. It's Aon, A-O-N. Uh, I'm not sure whether they'd be available where you are, though, but I do fully insure all my equipment um, for theft and loss, and also if I'm traveling overseas. It's very expensive here in Australia, though. Um, it's around about $1,000 Australian per year, um, so it's very expensive. But having said that, I do have an awful lot of gear, um, it's only costing me that much because I insure everything. Um, but you know, I, I just do it for safety. The other thing that you have to have too, just be aware too, not just photography insurance, but you've got to make sure that you're covered um, for liability as well. Um, so you have to make sure that if you're working with venues, um, things like that, that you've got insurance in case if someone trips over a light stand, knocks a light stand over, it hits someone, anything like that, you've got to make sure you've got liability insurance. So just make sure that uh, you get that. Uh, yeah, John. Hi, John. How are you, mate? Yeah, I use Aon. Um, it's, it's actually really quite a good company. We have very little um, that we can choose from here in Australia. I'm not sure how many different types there are. Um, but Aon seems to be very good. Um, I've never actually used them because I've never had anything that has been damaged or broken at this stage, but um, at least I've got that confidence in knowing if something does break um, or it's stolen, uh, that I'm fully covered. I'm just gonna have a drink. So getting back to this article, um, you should really have a read of it because it, it's something that I didn't consider when I was looking uh, at the original options for the A9. Um, so I think it's, it's something that really interests me in that respect. Um, so yeah, so chime in and see what you think about that, whether you think it would be advantageous to have this um, quick button that you can press that you can change all your settings for fast shooting and fast changing. Um, I'm still disappointed that nothing's been announced yet about this Sony S-Log, so that, that is still uh, really annoying me, and I'm, I'm so hoping that Sony changes that and adds that in firmware. The other thing too is the Play Memories app. Um, I'm still really sort of worried about what that will do as well. I know they're targeting this at um, sports shooters, um, but I still will miss that. Now for instance, has anyone mentioned anything about whether you can do time-lapse with this camera? Because there's no time-lapse app, I don't think. Uh, that was always done through the Play Memories app. So is that now available anymore? Some of those features um, uh, are important to me. Even if they're aiming this at a sports photographer, you may still want to do time-lapse photography. Um, G'day guys, a couple of others have... Uh, chimed in. Robert said, custom settings are handy, but if they override the hardware dials, that's confusing. Um, yeah, but the good thing is, I'll just put this up, Robert, so that you guys can see the questions. Um, the good thing is, Robert, though, it's only while you're pressing down that button. So, say for instance, you just want to have C1 as this custom button. Whenever you press that C1, it will override to whatever settings you've set, and that includes most of the features of the camera. So, it's only while you're actually pushing that button down. The second you let your finger off that button, it reverts back to what it was previously. So like I said, it might be just that you're going between two extremes, between inside the church, outside the church. You could then have the bride walking out, out in, the, in the, say, aisle, you're taking photos. The second you go into that contrasty bright light outside, you just hold the button and you can keep shooting. So you're not gonna miss that moment of them throwing the rice or the confetti over the bride, which sometimes I'm playing around with, with the features or the settings trying to make it work between two, because sometimes they just move so fast. So that to me is a really good feature. Um, hi Michael, how are you? Um, John Lambert said, uh, I think it will be a good feature as long as you're able to hold the button down while shooting. Yeah, that's why it will be a custom button like C1 or C2. Um, Marcus has said, did you see the angry photographer stream that tester rang him up and picked a few issues as he took it out away from the Sony control areas? No, I never saw that. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. Uh, I know he put a couple of things up the other day which cracked me up talking about Sony and he was ranting on about the, uh, the memory buffer. Uh, and I, I had a laugh about that. Um, but still, I don't think the memory buffer is an issue, guys. I mean, anyone that's shooting for that amount of time, if you watch sports shooters, they just don't keep their finger on the, uh, on the shutter button and just keep going and going and going and going. They'll be shooting, you know, one to two seconds. 
um, which is not an issue because it will never fill up if you do that. That's already been reported. So I don't think that's gonna be an, an issue with this camera. I think for most people, it's gonna be fine. I, I could never picture myself shooting off 200 odd roars uh, continuously like that. What would be the purpose? If something's gonna happen in sport, it's gonna happen over a, a one or two second period. They're not gonna shoot for that amount of time. So, um, oh, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, what else have we see here? Um, oh, now Marcus has said banding. Well, that is does seem to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, Max, you have posted an image about that um, on his uh, YouTube review. But having said that, the shutter speed that he was using was incredibly high. I think he said it was something like 2,300 um, in his shutter speed. Now, one to two thousandth. You're not gonna be shooting that sort of shutter speed uh, normally in, in, in an indoor area because usually with me, for instance, I'll have fast glass. I'm never gonna to need to go anywhere near that. You're only gonna get that shutter, I think you're only gonna get that banding if you're shooting with such high frame rates, which, or frame, uh, sorry, your high shutter speeds. Normal, the normal photographer is not gonna do that. So I don't think banding is gonna be much of an issue, but like I said, guys, wait to see this in full reviews uh, yet, but I'm pretty confident that look from what I've seen in all those results that the banding is not going to be such a major issue, but it is still gonna be there. But remember, if it is there, you can always turn to the mechanical shutter. So, you know, that sort of solves that issue as well, if you're worried. For instance, if I do buy this camera, and I'm still not certain yet whether I will, but I may, I'm pretty certain if I go in the shop, I probably will buy it. I've got to stay out of the camera stores. Um, but if I go in, if I see that the uh, banding is not, uh, not an issue, uh, it, I probably would think about buying it. The other thing too was, the someone posted the other day some low light footage of this. So this was real world low light footage, uh, and it was incredibly good up to about, I think they shot about uh, 25,000 ISO, and, and it looks actually really, really good. So it looks like the um, low light, focus, uh, low light um, ISO of this, this camera is very, very good, which also would be another uh, bonus for it. So at this stage, I'm still tossing. I'm not saying I'm not gonna get it. The Play Memories apps annoy me because it's not there. And like I said, is there a time-lapse uh, feature in this? I love having the uh, option of being able to um, override the time limit because that to me is amazing. I've put that on all of my cameras. I've put it on the A7 IIs, the A6300, A6500, the A7R. Uh, it, they've all got that no time limit uh, working now and, and I've not had any overheating problems with any of them. Uh, it just works now and I can now confidently leave it and not have to worry about it switching off in 30 minutes. So that's a way, that's something I'm also a bit annoyed. Uh, even though they're targeting this for that market, I'm just a bit annoyed that Sony has kept those features off. I'm hoping, guys, keep going on about this because I'm hoping Sony will change their minds. Uh, they may be just testing the waters to see if people are gonna uh, say anything about this. So please try and you know have a go at Sony and hopefully they'll they'll change their mind. Like I said, the camera here is, is I got a quote the other day, it was 6, 000, nearly $6,800 Australian, uh, which is you know pretty expensive. But then again, I had a uh, D4S, which was about $7,000. So as a working professional, that's not anything that I would be particularly worried about paying that sort of money. Um, so like I said, I'm still 50-50 at this stage whether I'll change my mind. I'm probably gonna wait for some real world reviews and then I'll, I'll see what happens then. S-Log, Play Memories apps. S-Log particularly, if they put that in, I'd probably buy it within in a heartbeat. So yeah, let's see what happens. Um, Butterfly Squad said, do you know shutter type, electronic mechanical can also change with the custom button? I think it can. Um, I'm not sure, let's have a look and see with that. Um, let's just see down here, whether it mentions the shutter. Yes, it does. There you go, additional options on the A9, shutter, auto, mechanical, electric. Um, so it does look like you actually can. Uh, let me see if I can bring that chat window back up. Oh, there it is. So it looks like it can change that. So that's fantastic too. You could switch between that as well very quickly. Um, Studio Vienna said, hi David, I get an A9 on Friday for one day. Oh, that's interesting. Lucky you. You'll have to report to me if you can. Give me a message about how you think it will be. 
Um, I will check out banding for sure. I'm very curious about how it performs overall. Yeah, and that's what, you know, that's the thing I'm waiting for to see how it performs overall before I do make that uh, full decision. Have you still got it on pre-order, Michael? Or are you still tossing about what to do? Um, so let's go down. I wanted to have a look and see what else they say you can change in this. Let me move this chat down so I can still see it. Uh, Three Trees Photography said, I'm waiting for an A7R2 upgrade. Um, that hopefully has 4K 60p. Yeah, uh, I hope that too. I mean, that, that, that surely has to be, say, the new, um, that has to be the new A7S2 or A9S. Uh, they have to be putting that feature into that. Um, that's the only reason why Sony would have left it off this camera. It probably could have handled it, no doubt, but they just didn't want to put it in. Um, yeah, so you have still got it on pre-order. Yeah. Uh, what date are they still saying? Is it the end of this month, Michael? Um, I think they were saying the end of May, weren't they? Um, so let's have a look what else they can change. Uh, they can change things like finder, frame rate. Oh, so you can go to super 35 mil mode. Well, that's a really good feature as well. Instead of going through your menus and trying to find that to change from APS-C or, or uh, full frame to 35 mil. Super 35, um, self timer. You can also do uh, pre AF, IAF, um, exposure standard. You can adjust your standards, exposure compensation. You can set changed on it. You can also switch, and that can be another feature too. You can also uh, switch between S and Q record settings. So that is really cumbersome if you're in a wedding situation where you want to do slow motion. Well, you can just change the dial at the top, but I'd love to just be able to press a button and then just immediately change to say going into 120 frames per second and then slow that down later on in Final Cut. So um, there, there's some great features. It looks like you really can change an awful lot uh, on this. Electronic front curtain shut, uh, shutter, zebras, it looks like it's almost everything. Um, so yeah, I think that's a great feature. Uh, Robert says a lot of the DPR Review sample images were not that impressive. Um, why do you think that, Michael? Just chime in and let us know what you think wasn't that good about them. I know looking at what the Northrop showed, the A7R2 still has the edge, uh, and it had quite an edge due to resolution, but I'm not certain yet what they were showing because there's no real raw uh, encoders out there yet. So we really have to wait until we see the raw footage uh, when Adobe releases the RAW for this, because like Max Eurif puts some up and the images look terrible, but that, that was just his RAW converter, the Sony RAW converter. So it's hard to judge images at this stage until Adobe releases a true RAW converter, uh, then we'll be able to test the images. At the moment, they're only shooting in JPEG, I think. Were they just JPEG images, Robert? They probably were. Um, so that's that discussion. Um, so I thought, wow, that's, that's really interesting. So I wanted to talk to you all about that. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, this article, because you guys particularly in the US can help me here. Um, I do a lot of modeling shoots and I'm doing a modeling shoot with, I think it's four or five girls in um, July or June this year up in the snow. It's in the mountains. Uh, so I suppose the temperatures are going to be below zero um, But I just checked in one of the forums this morning There was a, a person complaining about how his a7r2 had trouble um, With being working in a cold environment. I think he said it was um, Minus six according to this article and he said that the shutter basically stopped working. It made some funny noises and the shutter, the shutter stopped working. Um, oh, so Mark, they have got RAW up. Do you know what encoder they're using though, Robert? Because Robert's saying um, that uh, in here that the, the, they have RAW up now, but I don't think there's a real RAW converter up yet. So I'm not certain how these things are being converted. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, Three Trees said if they have an A99 that can shoot 11 frames per second, 42 megapixels, they certainly have the tech to do many things. Yes, and they have, and they're holding back like anything. Um, they don't want to release everything at this stage, so and I can understand that. They still want to make money from their video cameras. Um, but remember, when we are talking about the, um, the S-Log, for instance, that is included in every Sony camera that's been released so far, well, like the 6500, 
um, the A7Rs. Uh, I'm not sure about the, I don't think it's on the A7Is. Um, but, you know, that, that, it becomes an issue when they take something like that off. Now, admittedly, they could have just said, well, we're going to, with the A7S III, put uh, 4K60P on it, and then that would be the difference between this A9R. Uh, the A9, and that would be fine. People would live with that. They may also put a full flip-out screen on the, uh, on the Sony video camera. So there's no excuse, Sony, for keeping that off because they could have had that 4K60 as being the thing that was different and the low light. It would probably have less resolution. Uh, John Lambert said, um, I have no issues shooting landscapes in Tassie at zero degree temps and in light rain, but the snow shoot may be a lot colder. Yeah, and that's what I'm not sure. We'll go back to that in a second. Um, Studio 96 said, I'm uh, from Sony, you can connect the camera to play memories, of course, but you cannot install apps yet. Also, the camera is weatherproof. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure how weatherproof it is, though, but as long as you use lenses like the Batis, they're fully, their lens, they're weatherproof. If you're using ones, obviously, that haven't got the seal around the lens, that could become an issue. So I'll probably be using fully weatherproof lenses on the day. It's more that the cold. Um, Three Trees Photography said, yes, the shutter started to freeze up on me in the cold as well. We'll see, there you go, so that's interesting. Um, so let's go down and have a look at what this article says. So he was saying that um, the camera is rated from zero to 40C. I think that's what they're saying that Sony rates it from. Um, but he had issues where it just wouldn't work and they had to take the battery out and warm it up and then it, it obviously started functioning properly again. Um, but down here in the comments, people are, are commenting that they use it all the time. And this guy here, if you look at this camera, he's from Finland. And he was saying that I live in Finland, Northern Europe, and we have pretty cold winter here, especially in Lapland, minus 20 to minus 40 degrees C. My A7R2 works just fine in these conditions. Of course, battery runs out faster, etc. but overall, no big problem. So... That's interesting. I mean, look at the camera if you look at that. Like, you know, it's um, it's almost frozen. He's saying that it still works. So I wonder if it's camera related. So how many of you guys have worked with uh, Sony uh, A7R2 or the, or their other cameras? And, and let me know if you found that it is it is a real issue. Um, so Studio 96 said it's weatherproof like the A7R, if not better. Yeah, well, I'm hoping it is. I mean, no one really has tested that yet, so I'm hoping it is. I've, I've had the A7R out in in quite heavy rain and also under waterfalls, and it still functioned uh, quite well. I'm pretty hard on my gear, um, and it was fine. So uh, Three Trees Photography said, I was able to take pictures, but the camera sounded really bad. Yeah, and that's probably what it may be. It might just be that the shutter goes a bit funny. Maybe you could run the 4K video to warm it up. <laughs> I should have actually tried that. Yeah, so run a bit of 4K and it might warm it up. Um, that might be one big plus for the new A9 because it hasn't got the mechanical shutter. So that could be interesting in that situation that you're not going to have that thing that you'd have to worry about. So... Yeah, that, that's something interesting. So I thought I'd um, mention that to you. Um, because it, it's, it's actually quite interesting. Now what I thought I'd do was I'm going to um, start showing what's in my bag and I thought that I'd show you a couple of things that I've just got um, recently. Oh, well, I've had them for a while, but I thought that I'd just start showing things that um, I've got that I carry around. So I might show two or three things each time. Um, so the first thing that I thought I'd show is this little article. Now I'm gonna switch over cameras so that you can see what I'm talking about is this little thing here. So it's actually like a normal um, variable Newton, neutral density filter. Um, but one of the things that I have a real problem with is that changing things quickly. So for me, if I'm walking out between a dark environment and a uh, light environment, and I have to change things very, very quickly, it's incredibly hard to um, to screw on a variable filter and it takes you know a good minute or so to get it on and and you've got to fiddle with things around you've got to carry extra stuff with you so i bought this system and i've done a review on it ages back but i thought i'd show you because it's i have a lot more followers now but basically how it works is on your camera lens what you do is you screw on the front of this 
this other magnetic uh, filter holder. Now the beauty is then that all I have to do is come up and I just go like that and it, it attaches. And to take it off, you can just go like this again. So one of the beauties with this is, you, sometimes it's very hard to get your focus with a variable ND filter on. Well, I can focus without it, and then I can just clip up and put it on and it's done. Um, it's it's abso absolutely incredible. And I've got these now on all my lenses with all of uh, the, like the 35, 2.8, the 70 to 200, the 24, 70, like the Zeiss Battis my wide angle lens, you have to buy different, um, obviously, uh, sized uh, magnetic rings that fit on your camera, um, but plop, done. And then obviously you can just turn around to get your variable density uh, done correctly. So what do you think about that, guys? I mean, I, I absolutely love it. This, it's an amazing thing that this company's come up with that you can actually just do like that and just plop it and it's, uh, it's done without you having to, to do anything else to it. So. It's incredible. Uh, now this brand is, what am I using? Mariam, I think this one is. I use, I use all different ones. Um, I've got uh, Hoya. There's, there's stacks of different ones that I actually use. Um, I, I mean, really, I, all I look at them is how they perform and if they look like they're fairly good quality. This, this was reasonably expensive, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a M-A-R-U-M-I. Uh, it's made in Japan, um, and it's a variable neutral density filter. Um, so that's the one I'm using there, and I, I use Hoya a lot as well. So it just depends um, which one I grab for which lens. This is variable. Sometimes I'm using the fixed ones, uh, you know, like an ND6 or an ND8. I have those as well. Uh, because the problem is a lot of these, if you do put it fairly extreme, you do get the cross uh, against them. So you've got to be a little bit careful if you go fairly extreme with these. That's why if I do have to use something fairly strong, uh, like an ND8 or ND9, uh, I'll use the fixed ones, not the um, these variable ND filters. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how they work. So just plop and it's done. Uh, you can carry on, then just pull it away when you don't want to be using it anymore. So they're fantastic. I'll put a link to that when I finish this chat. Um, I'll see if I can find the link to it and I'll put it down. But they're really, really good. Um, but fantastic. So that's the first thing that I wanted to show you. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you was this little device. Now, I'm using this now all the time. Um, this one is the Color Checker Passport. Um, it's fantastic for getting your gray balance. Um, the, the problem is when you're working in multiple environments for lighting, it's very, very hard to get uh, white balance correct. So I'm now tending to use this a lot to get white balance in the beginning. I've only just started using it. Um, but it's a fantastic uh, little color checker. This is the video one though, not the, um, not the photography one. I, I prefer this one to be honest. If you are on a Mac and you're using Final Cut, this is incredible because I'll show something how that works one day that you can just use these little areas on the edges to get your white balance for, for video as well. Um, but the beauty too is that you've also got this on the other side. Let me just see if I can close this. So this is ideal for getting your white balance in any environment. So, you know, it's very small. I just keep it in my camera bag. I'll put it on the desk, uh, on a table in the reception and then do white balance off that. So it's always with me. Uh, and you know, you can see by my hand, it's really quite small, but this is, is amazing here. This is great for getting focus. Um, so it's fantastic for pulling focus on this. Like I'm gonna put this out of focus and you'll see how it works. So if we, Come down, you can sort of see as it gets sharp through here that you get it nice and sharp. So basically what you look at in here is to make sure it's nice and sharp through these areas. Uh, you know, and it, it works great. So this is another thing that I've been uh, using as well um, all the time too. So great for, like I said, getting white balance correct. Often the auto white balance and things like that just don't work in mixed environments. It's pretty good if you haven't got mixed environments, but if you have, that this is a lifesaver. Um, so that's the Color Checker Passport. It is the video version, um, not the um, not the f photographic version. I have both. I do have the uh, photographic one as well. Uh, let me just check a couple of questions. Um, LJC said, I have Rocky on 12mm f2. I'm still looking for a filter for that lens. It's 67mm. 
Uh, yeah, well, the Batis is 67. So that one there is uh, 67 as well. So you could use the same filter that I've got, basically. Uh, that will work with that. Now, the other thing I was going to show today, too, is the cage that I've just bought for my um, A7R, uh, A6500. a um, I got the small rig uh, cage. I had that in my other camera as well. So it was... Um, if you look back, you'll see the review of my small rig that I had with the A6300. Um, but this is the new one d directly for the A6500. So, you know, it's a great minimal type cage. Uh, this little part here is just for your um, HDMI cable. So you can lock your HDMI cable so they don't come out because those little ports always break. So it's important to have some sort of cable that you can actually uh, function and lock it in so it doesn't actually pull out. There's just the one screw underneath and you can still access all your battery compartments, um, you know, all of your uh, ports, things like that are all completely available and all your buttons are still available as well. That was an added extra. I have that because basically you can stick something on here uh, and then use obviously this handle to uh, put on. which will do and then you've got a great little kit um, with a handle already on it so that's from a company called small rig um, it, they're a great little company and it was only just not much over a hundred dollars like it was incredibly cheap and I think this was only about thirty dollars uh, as well so it's a really really good cage that you can use um, for your ace uh, 6500 um, I don't leave that on all the time, to be honest. I only keep that on when I'm going to be shooting video. If I'm just shooting stills, uh, I'm just using um, it without the cage because I like to be minimal. But if I am going to be shooting video, well, it is very nice to have that type of a cage uh, on as well. So they're small rig if you want to look at getting those. And they have all different attachments that you can put on the top of the handles. Um, you know, you can get all these different... Uh, like flash cold shoe attachments as well. Well, I just noticed there's one over here. I didn't even notice that. Um, so yeah, so it's a great little cage and not, not too heavy. So I thought I'd show you that one. Um, let me bring you back to the desktop. So let me know what you think about those. Um, I'll put links to those on um, my uh, on the about part to this uh, video so you can sort of see if you can get those yourself or whether you want to get them. Uh, I'll probably do it through Amazon or something like that if they have them. I don't think they'll have small rig though, so I'll have to see. Um, but I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just find they're good. Actually, I'm not sponsored by anyone. So everything I show you is what I use. Um, so it's it's one way of looking at it. Let me just check some of the questions. Um, Tag Shooter said, uh, yeah, I like the small rig. rig. I've got it as well. Um, Michael said, hey Dave, have you ever shot with a Sony 100GF? No, I haven't yet. Um, that, the only thing that puts me off that lens is its aperture is not fast enough for me, Michael, uh, because it ends up being about a 5.6 lens. So even though that bokker is beautiful and round, um, it's still f limited use for me in that it's, it's basically, it says 2.8, but it's actually not, it's actually 5.6. So that's probably why I won't bother with that lens. Um, I do like to tend to shoot, like I've said, primes uh, wide open. So, you know, I like to shoot sort of 1.8 if I can or 1.4 um, most of the time. Um, so I probably won't get that. I mean, I may review it one day if I can get my hands on one, but I wouldn't buy it for that reason of uh, that it's only 5.6. That's the problem too with the 135 Battis as well is it's 2.8, it's not fast enough for what they're asking for that lens. Um, Tag said, it's confusing using the small ring on a tripod to me. Why'd you find that? Um, I'm just having a look, I don't think. I just connect on here, I just actually connect the um, tripod holder, I haven't got the thing in here, no it's in the other room. Uh, I just put the, um, I use, um, not the Manfrotto, it's the other one, Arcus. Swiss, and I just put that on there and it goes on the tripod no problem at all. So I like that system, it works fine for me. Uh, let's have a look. Um, Three Trees said there should be 22 likes, what's up with people? <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, thanks so much, mate. That's great. I love you saying that. Yeah, please like it if you can. It might bring other people into my vi uh, into the channel. I am trying to add people. You know what though? I've still got I think 4,600 people watching this now or subscribe to me, and I absolutely love you guys. And I'm hoping that it will grow and grow and grow. Um, I'm just going to keep producing as much sort of hopefully good content as I can. Um, now I put on a um, an, a, a video the other day showing the A6500, and I also put one, uh, I think it was yesterday, with the A7R2 using the Profoto gear. I'm not sure whether you watched that, but I was using the new Profoto Air Remote um, on high-speed sync um, and TTL. So it was the first real trial of me doing that um, fully, and I'm so happy with how the actual shoot went. I might bring some images up, and we can have a look, actually. Might be better. Um, now this shoot was um, done, uh, like I said, a couple of days ago, last weekend. Um, the good part about using a high um, powered lamp or, or strobe is that you don't have to be too close. I've noticed a lot of people using the, um, what's that one now that Manny Otis was talking about the other day, guys, that was had the 200 output on it. Um, was that a, wasn't a Flash Pro, was it? You might chime in. I know there's there's one he was just promoting the other day. But the, the issue for me is that I don't like to be too close to the model for most of these type shoots because you, you, it stops you shooting environmental. And what I mean by environmental is what you're looking at here, where I'm shooting surrounding areas as well as the model uh, at the same time. The problem is if I'm using an underpowered light, um, you'd have to have the actual light. I might bring this up because I'll talk about it. Let me see, where's this scribble? Um, if, if I was using a strobe like that 200 watt unit, and if someone can remind me on, uh, by adding in the comments there about it, you'd have to probably have a strobe somewhere in here. Um, you know, and then look, you could retouch them out. You could also have, take two shots. Um, you could have, say, uh, one shot without the flash being there for the environment, and then you could have one shot with the flash being her, and then you'd retouch, obviously, the flash out. But yeah, Godex, thanks, Marcus. It is the Godex AD200. Um, so you could do two shots and then retouch it out. I, I like to get everything right in camera if I can. I mean, sometimes I'll do that, but if I can, I'd like to um, not have that problem at all. Um, so for me, it's much better if you've got the flash, you know, somewhere sort of out here somewhere or even a bit further. Um, so yeah, it becomes a bit of an issue for me. Now with this, I had the flash basically over here. So you can sort of see where the flash is actually situated here on the right hand side. So it was a long way away from the model. Now that can cause other issues too, because you're going to get, remember the further away your light is from the subject, the harder the light will be. So if I was trying to make this a beautiful soft portrait of that model, I would bring that light in as close as possible. But then I'm not trying to shoot environmental. But that's why I love the Profoto so much. Well, you don't have to even have to get a Profoto, but say any 600 watt flash. Um, I know Godex have some amazing 600 watt flashes as well, but then you could also bring it in close if you needed to and cut the power down, or you could use a bigger diffusion uh, diffuser. Or if you have to, you can move that flash right away and still have the power to bring that uh, subject up. Um, yeah, so I did this shoot on the weekend. Now these were all with the uh, A6500 because I wanted to try that um, with working on the um, Pro Photo um, with the Pro Photo lights. Um, but I was really, really happy with how it actually performed. The interesting thing is, I found that the A6500 syncs with the Pro Photo up to 250th of a second. It shouldn't do that. It should only sync at 160th. So I'm not certain how that works, but I can go up to 250th before I get any banding at all, uh, and it's no issue at all, which uh, is pretty amazing. So, and like I said, these images are um, the ones that were shot with the A6500. If 
you know, and if we look at them, uh, you know, they're really quite beautiful for what they, they are. Don't have anyone telling you you can't shoot with the A6500 professionally, guys, because um, I'm really, really happy with how it performed. Um, that softbox, look, I have, I have a million different softboxes, uh, Marcus. Um, the one that we're using here is a two-foot um, Pro Photo one. Uh, let me see if I can see it in another shot. I might have one that's a bit closer. No, I don't think I have. I'm just scrolling through the whole session. Uh, I'll go back down here. You'll see it too if you go into the video, because if you look at my last video that I put on, um, oh, you can sort of get to see it there. Uh, this is a two foot octa uh, as well, and it has a grid on it, which works really, really well. Um, so that it's, the reason why you use the grid is because I don't want that flash to come all through around, I'll just show you because I'll draw it. I don't want that flash to come through here. I don't want it to sort of come over here. I only want it to affect this area here. So when you use a, a diffuser with a grid on it, you can basically tailor that so the light is basically coming in exactly to the area that you want without it spilling over all of this area over here, if that makes sense. So it's important for me to use that grid. I only really take that grid off if I'm getting very, very close and I want the, uh, the model to have very, very soft lighting. Um, so then I would take it off. Um, let me just bring up, let me just bring up the questions again. We'll just see what people are asking. Um, okay, I see it's in the upper left and then right, yep. Perfect, so they're talking about that. Uh, Michael has the Broncolor 800L, serious mono lights. Oh, well, they'd be beautiful, Michael. Um, but I love the light and it's beautiful. Uh, are they working TTL and, and um, high-speed sync, Michael? I suppose they will on the Sonys now. Um, what size to softbox do you recommend? Look, it depends. Uh, the one I've got in the studio is the five-foot octaboxes. Um, you'll probably see that, I oh, know you won't see them this weekend. Um, I use them all the time for portraits, but I've also got things like zoom reflectors and everything, depending on the lighting situation. I'm going to show, even though it's not related to what most of you are using, because I'm using Profoto, um, I'm gonna show soon all the different lighting modifiers that I actually use, and it'll give you an idea about tailoring that to whichever system you've got, because Broncolor would have similar systems, you know, Flash Pro would have similar systems. Uh, they're all very similar in the way that they work, um, so I will take you through all the ones that I use. Uh, for travel, obviously, or, or doing things quick, I love this two-foot octa because that two-foot octa is very small, very, very quick to, to, to pull apart and put back up again. Um, and it's incredibly light. It's feather light. Um, so, you know, it, it's amazing. So I use that most of the time in weddings and quick portraits. Uh, if I'm doing things that are very slow, I'll then take my full five-foot octa. Or I've also got umbrellas that are five feet as well. Um, and I'll use those too, you know, like really big, big, you know, two meter umbrellas. Um, so I can use that too. Um, and a light stand, I use, well, I use all different light stands. I often use C stands, but sometimes I always have a, um, an assistant marker. So for me, it's not really a problem. So I've always got someone holding that light for me. If not, I'd just take normal light stands and sandbags, um, if, if I was worried about it being, you know, windy or whatever, I'd probably just take my C stands with me. They're not too, they're heavy, but I'd still take those. I have a couple of C stands, big ones, uh, and then I have multiple, you know, just the, the sort of Manfrotto light stands. I'll take you around the studio one day and show you the whole setup I've got. Um, Tag Shooter said I have the old uh, Flashpoint 360 with a Godox uh, one and the trigger to make it high speed. Yeah, well, like I said, Profoto have only just released the Sony one, um, but yeah, and I, I, it's working amazing. I, I absolutely love it. Um, yes, Broncolor has HS, but not TTL. Okay, well, they may bring it out, Michael, hopefully. Like I said, the Profoto one have just released the TTL and HSS, uh, and it worked great. Like I said, I tried it on the weekend. With some of these shots, um, I'll just move this down. We'll go to some of the different ones so you can sort of have a look, and I'll show you. These ones here, um, obviously, were brought much closer to the model um, because I wanted it a little bit softer, so they were brought a lot closer to the model. Uh, if we go up and have a look 
at some of these other ones. This one here, these were obviously were brought, you know, right fairly close uh, to the model as well. And as we go further down, these were junior girls that I was photographing. Um, these are girls who are paying for a portfolio. Uh, and I'll bring you up and you can have a look at some of these. Um, these were also quite close. So we had the flash unit quite close to these girls as well uh, for their close-up shots. Um, so these were all quite close. They're beautiful and sharp. It was just using eye detect on the Sony. So the eye detect works amazing. I was using it for most of the shots for the day. Um, and let me bring up, they worked, it worked amazing. Yeah, so I'll just go full screen so you can sort of see. So, so you can get really nice soft uh, type work with these as well. Um, that's just bringing in the soft box a lot closer um, to the actual girl. Um, with them as well, so you know they're they're, they're beautiful. It's uh, it works so good, and and this I was so happy with the way that it all worked. These were all with a Sony A six five hundred. So like I said, you can't you can't let anyone say to you that these won't give you really beautiful um, images from using something like the A six five hundred. You know they're really quite stunning, and and this is why I laugh at people that will say. You, you can't use A6500 for um, professional work. <laughs> what a joke. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this camera. If, if this is all you can afford, um, it's what you'd be using. I did this deliberately on the day to test it out, but also I wanted to show you guys to see how it would actually perform on the day. I did have my A7R2 on me. I wouldn't be silly enough to never have a diff another camera on me in case if I needed it. Um, but, you know, it was there in case if if I had issues or I wasn't quite happy with what was going on. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I certainly wouldn't discount the A6500 at all. Uh, it's beautiful and sharp. Um, this was using the 85 mil on this, so I did use the Batis. So it was giving me that 135 sort of uh, look about it. Uh, nice, you know, out of bocker rendering. So you can't tell me you can't get nice out of bocker on a, um, you know, on a A6500. Um, so, you know, anyone that tells you that you won't get the nice out of focus areas is not telling the truth. Um, I didn't use the 2.8 because I was filming with it on the day on my A6300. So that's the reason why I never used the uh, 24 1.8. Uh, but I love that lens too. Um, I think all the environmental ones, which one, what were they shot with? Um, yeah, see, these are all 85 mil batters, but I'll just go down to these wider ones and have a look. Oh, there you go, I did use the 24 mil. Yeah, so I did use the 24 mil on the day. Um, I used them for all of these environmental shots and probably down in that first one, uh, let me just check, I'll just go to rated so it's quicker. Where are we? Yeah, well, that was shot with the 24 mil too. So yeah, they were shot with the that was shot with a 24 mil as well, guys. So I love that lens, that 24 1.8. Uh, it was shot at 2.2. So I didn't shoot wide open though, um, but it was 2.2 uh, there, but it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore that lens. Uh, let me just have a look at some of the questions. Um, is the umbrella type to put up or do you have to put it together? No. Um, the, the softbox that you're looking at that I just showed before is, is you can put it together, but I just leave it together. You can pull it apart very easily though, and everything's color coded. It takes two minutes to put together. The umbrella type is just like an umbrella, but it's a massive umbrella. Um, like I said, it's about two meters uh, in height, um, but it's gorgeous and it's so strong. It's silver, so if I want a really high fashion type look, I can use that silver umbrella. Um, it's stunning. So I'll often use that if, uh, if I'm after high key type looks. If I'm doing stuff in the studio with a high key white background, I'll often use that. Uh, it's got a beautiful spread. Uh, and I love the way you can just move it in and out to control it too. Um, so they're the umbrellas that I take. Um, I also use see-through umbrellas, but I don't use them much anymore, just your translucent ones, because I'm mostly using that Profoto softbox. If I'm using flash though, just your standard Sony flashes, 
Um, I will be using see-through umbrellas uh, so that you can sort of, um, it's not too harsh. Uh, so I do that all the time as well. Um, Three Choose Photography said, I wish I could pick which eye was being tracked. <laughs> yeah, I know, it, it is a pity actually that you can't do that. Uh, it, it'll come eventually. Um, apparently that'll be one good thing with the new A9. The eye tracking looks like it's incredible. It'll pick it up as soon as it sees a face. Sometimes it, it can be a bit picky. I've found that the A6, uh, A7R2 and the A6500 with me wearing glasses has issues um, with face detect particularly but it looks like the A9, they've sorted that out. So, you know, that's an interesting thing with that. So that's another reason why I might be swayed. Um, Tag, the shooter photography said, I'm not buying that 24 1.8 lens, David. Don't say it, <laughs> don't say it, I've got a good enough lens. I know my, that is an amazing lens. Seriously, that's my favorite lens on APS-C, I adore it. Uh, it's just incredible. Um, let's have another look what some people are saying. Um, three trees photography said I want that 24 too uh, if you do buy it guys buy it down below because at least I'll get a few pennies from it <laughs> I've got it's on the Amazon affiliate link um, what else are we saying um, now Nava said I'm using the Zeiss Betis 85 25 mil and the 18 millimeter with the a7r2 I wish to know which one is better for portrait lens Sony G Master 100 or the Zeiss Betis 135 um, oh mm. I'd probably get the 135 if I had to buy between those two, only because it's 2.8. Um, like I said, the 5.6 could have some real issues uh, in that 100 mil in low light. So that's me personally. Um, but if you're in good light, um, the uh, 100 will be beautiful. But I'm just not certain that that's fast enough for me. But that's just me personal. Um, and Tag the Shooter said the G Master, so yeah, everyone's going to vary what they say. What programs do you edit video on, David, and what speed Mac uh, setup are you running? Uh, I use Final Cut Pro, um, and I'm using um, a Mac Pro. Um, it was, I don't know, it's a couple of years old now. It's an uh, eight-core unit, um, but it, it's fantastic for doing uh, the three-core one. I got the two um, highest graphics cards in it, so it runs 4K without an issue. Um, so that's what I'm using, um, but apparently the newer computers that are out now are much better, but this is just a workhorse and it never gets hot. I mean, I'm running it now and you can't hear it, it's dead silent. Uh, so there's reasons why I went down the Mac Pro route rather than getting, say, an iMac or a, um, a MacBook Pro. I do have a MacBook Pro, but I don't use it. It's just for uh, doing light editing and, and stuff like that. Um... So that's that for that question. So any more questions about how the A6500 went? I, I used eye detect all the time, that worked flawlessly. I was nearly on continuous focus the whole time, that went fine, I had no issues with it. Um, yeah, it is the trash cam one. Yeah, that's the one I've got, it's, it's the black, um, the black unit that looks like a, a trash can, yeah. It was the dearest one that they have, but I suppose it's it's probably no longer their fastest, but for me, it, it'll edit 4K without an issue, so that I'm happy with them upgrading. Michael said, the Sony Zeiss 50 1.4 is one of my favorite lenses out of all lenses I have, underrated. Sony made a mistake on the timing of dropping that lens after the Sony Zeiss 55 1.8, yeah. I've got the 55 1.8, I haven't got the 50, obviously, because I have the, the 55. Um, my favourite full frame lens is the 34 one, uh, the 35 1.4. Uh, but like I said, I've always um, been a 35 focal range shooter. That's my favourite range for most things that I do. So that's why the 35 is my favourite on the A7R2, and I love that 1.4 lens. There was people saying they weren't happy with their copy, but I must have a great copy because it's dead sharp and it's uh, you know it's so it's so beautiful. The other thing too I like about the 24 on the APS-C uh, camera is that it's almost a macro as well. You can get so close up with that lens, and it will focus you know an inch away or something. It's ridiculous for what it, what it is. So you've got that great focal range, but also a great macro lens. It's not one-to-one, -one, but it's still a good lens for that. So that's a great thing. I wish the um, 35 1.4, the full frame lens, would focus like that one. Um, what else? Uh, Tag the shooter said, yeah, Michael, I love the 55 because it's so small. Uh, that's why I didn't get the 50, yeah. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good reports about the 50. Um, if I didn't have the 55, I, I may have bought that one. 
I just don't need another 50. Um, I don't use the 55 much either uh, because I'm tending to shoot all the time 35 and 85. Uh, I don't shoot with the 55 much. I do in studio though, um, sometimes, but you know, mostly I've got the Badass 85 on. Uh, take the shooter said, yeah, I love the 35 1.4, but hardly use it. What do you use the 35 to shoot with mostly, David? Uh, it's all the bridal stuff. Like when I'm, I'm doing weddings, anything that's doing the details, uh, the bride getting changed, uh, stuff like that is always done with the 35. Um, in the reception, I use it for all the low light stuff of grabbing details and tables, shooting all the guests in low light without flash. I hate using flash. I, I won't use flash unless I have to because I find it spoils the moment. So I'm nearly always shooting 1.4 wide open and it's gorgeous. It gives that beautiful rendering. Um, so I use it all the time. Um, the other one I use a lot too is the 35 2.8. I love that lens. It's tiny. If I'm traveling, uh, that's a great lens that you can just take around to put on your camera to be minimalistic. Uh, and it's so sharp. It's razor sharp, but it's only 2.8. But I love that lens. I'd never get rid of that lens. Um, Marcus said, wow, angry photographer must be on medication. Oh, no. He just said on his live stream, Sony does the best video and best high-end pictures. Wow. <laughs> now he's shelled out for a GFX. He's got more gear than... Oh, no. Where does he get his money from, this guy? It's incredible. He's got, like, 50 cameras or something and lenses. He keeps saying he's not sponsored, but I don't know, because, geez, he has a lot of lenses and cameras. I'm not sure. Like, that GFX, the Fuji, is about eight grand or something. I know it's about nine grand, uh, grand Australian. I think it's 6,500 USA. So a lot of money. Because he doesn't show any of his work. Like what, how can he justify a camera like that? Um, Studio 96 said, a tip for all A7R shooters, um, shoot always raw plus JPEG medium and neutral minus three contrast and minus three sharpening. So you can uh, very fast zoom in for control, the sharpness and viewfinder looks. Oh, so you're saying, yeah, because it will only use the um, JPEGs to view. Is that what you're saying, Vienna? That, that's interesting. Thanks for that tip. Um, Tag the shooter photographer said, okay, I will use the 35 1.4 on my next wedding in June. Yeah, you'll love it. It's it's a fantastic lens. I use that also for um, when the bride and groom enter the um, reception because it's usually low lit. Um, and I'll always use that. Remember, your Sony cameras, the a7R and a7II are only as good as the lens that you put on it. Fast glass, the focusing improves dramatically. So I always use fast glass in low light situations and that's why I love the 1.4, 1.8 lenses uh, because they have so much ease. The 55 millimeter apparently is one of the fastest focusing lenses, the 1.8. I don't know how that compares to the 50, Michael. You might wanna chime in how you found the focusing in low light with the 50. Um, Dave, Delta Dave 44 uh, said, he said he sold three cameras to pay for the GFX. I know, but he had something like three, he's got about four or something Fuji um, T2s or something or whatever they are, and he's got about four different lenses that he's using for each one. I mean, you listen to him, I don't know whether he's telling the truth, because he only ever shows one, but I don't know, I mean, perhaps he is telling the truth, but I'd love to know where he's getting the money to buy all that stuff from. I mean, he's got nearly 100,000 subscribers, so... Perhaps there's something happening there. Um, so is there any more questions, guys? I'm not sure how long we've been going. Probably a long time. <laughs> um, studio said yes, and the medium JPEGs are just superb. Uh, much better than full. Okay, well, that's interesting. I might try that. I only ever shoot raw, to be honest. I've never sure to, thought about shooting JPEGs as well at the same time. Um, does it slow your camera down, though? Vienna, is it because you're shooting both? Um, the tag shooter photographer said, yeah, that's why the 55 stays on my A7R. And when I do events, the 24-7 2.8 does now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the 24-7 2.8 obviously is good. But like I said, I just don't want that weight anymore. Uh, that's why I, I just stick usually to the primes. Um, 3 true photographer said, I have the angry photographer on in the background too. He definitely knows his stuff. He does. There's no, den no denying that he knows what he's talking about. Uh, he can drive you nuts, but like I said, I think he's just doing most of it for, for likes and subscribers. Take it with a grain of salt. I'll just watch it for the enjoyment. Um, Michael said, I had the 55 and sold it after I got the 50, but regret it. I sold it because it was a gem to carry around, and the 50 is not as fast as the 55. Okay. 
Uh, have you found the focusing, Michael? Have you found it? Does it focus very, very well? Does it focus as good as the 55? Um, Tag Shooter said, have you ever used a 2470 Goldmaster? Yes, I have. Uh, I, I mean, look, it's a beautiful lens, but for me, I've got the 2470 f4, and to be honest, I should sell it because I never use it. Um, I, I mostly shoot primes now, so for me, there's no reason for me to get the um, GM. The, I suppose I'm a bit spoiled too because I've got another full-time shooter that shoots with me that they're using the other lenses as well. They usually carry the, the 70 to 200 and the 2470, but for me, I just love that fast open glass. Um, so that's the reason why I'm not going to go for the 2470 or the 7200 2.8. Uh, for me, it's just not what I want to do anymore. I just love the 85. If I was to sell my 85 Batis, I'd get the 85 Goldmaster. Um, but I love the Batis, so for me, there's no reason to change at this stage. I'll probably just change bodies and then I'll see what glass uh, is released. The only one I may get is if the 16 to 35 2.8 is released, I may get that because I do like that wide angle look in churches and receptions. So uh, I found the F4 sometimes is not fast enough that I've got. I've got the 16 to 35 F4. Um, but I may sell that and buy the uh, 2.8 if it's released. Because I, I do use that focal length a lot. Uh, I like that wide angle. When I was a Nikon shooter, I loved the uh, 10 to 18. Um, so if they release a 16 to 35, I'll go master, I probably will buy that. Um, Three Tree said, angry photography is pretty crude, but honest, I guess. <laughs> um, interested in that GFX. Yeah, well, that's I've got no... Uh, interest at all in the GFX because I don't want to shoot um, uh, my uh, f what is it that's a um, I've got leaf shutter isn't it that one plus you've it's only for very slow shooting it's not for my type of shooting so yeah I won't be getting that camera uh, plus the lenses are incredibly expensive too um, Vienna said I shoot raw too but if you shoot JPEG medium with raw the camera is much faster okay I'll have to try that um, Three Trees Photography said, yeah, me too, David. Um, Delta Day 44, have you tried the new STF? And I've spoke about that before, no. Um, I'm not really interested, Delta Dave, because um, it's the 5.6 uh, rating on that for aperture that I don't find enticing. It's, it says 2.8, but it's only 5.6. Um, yeah, I love the Battis too, so small and fast, and I adore that Battis. Some people say they don't like the cat size, doesn't bother me, doesn't bother my clients, so I'm not worried about it. Um, Three Trees Photography said, how much do you normally pay a second shooter for weddings? I wonder what wedding rates are in Australia. Um, my average wedding rate here in Australia is $4,000 per wedding. Um, I do go above that, uh, but that's my average uh, wedding rate is $4,000. If they want video, that's another $1,000 on top, well, $1,200 on top of that. Um, as a second shooter, I pay uh, $300 um, per shooter for the day for six hours. So that's basically what I'm paying. Um, the tag shooter photographer said, how much do you think the 16 to 35 is gonna be? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be close to 3,000 for sure. Um, but like I said, I love that focal range for inside churches and things like that and receptions. And sometimes it's just not, the F4 is just not sharp enough and I've gotta crank the ISO up so high. So I would love an F2.8. Uh, Michael's said, yeah, the 50 is fast and its focus is good, but it's a little heavier with the glass, so it's not super fast like the 55. Um, it's probably sharper than the 55, is it, Michael, though? I think um, I've heard it's a very, very sharp lens. Although a lot of people still say the 55 is the sharpest. Um, there's chromatic aberrations on the 55 a little bit, but I've found Lightroom, it's easy to get rid of, but it's incredibly sharp. Um, yeah, well, is there any other questions, guys, before we... Um, call it a day. Don't forget to give this a like. Um, you know, I mean, I'd really appreciate that, guys, if you if you can give it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget, too, you can add questions down below, and I will always get back to you um, because I always answer some pretty well straight away as long as I'm, I'm up because, remember, the time difference is, is uh, different for you guys. Um, let me know how you found the A7R2, like I said, in, in the cold, if, if you've had issues shooting the snow too, because like I said, I've got that shoot coming up. Um, oh, so it is sharp in the 55. Wow, it must be a good lens. Mm. It's only the weight probably that would put me off, Michael. Um, I'd really have to justify 
changing because I've already got the 55, so I'll probably just stick with that. Um, tag the shooter photographer said, I'm pacing on whether I'm going to cancel my 100, 400 order with my A9. If you shoot sports, um, great lens to get. Um, if you're not, I wouldn't be buying it, but that's just me. Um, I, I have no need for a 100 to 400 lens. If you're shooting sports, it might be really good, but I'd probably tend to wait a little bit because I think they'll probably end up release, releasing a prime faster lens, you know, like a 300 millimeter f2.8 or something. But you know, it's going to be seven grand for that, so you've, it's a it's a hard call. What do you guys think? Is anyone else interested in buying that 100 to 400? Um, and the color's better too, Michael. Wow, well, yeah, it must be a good lens. Stop it, Michael. You ended up making me buy it. <laughs> I don't need it. No, I'm not going to buy it. I just, I just can't justify it. Um, studio said good night. Well, we might leave it there, guys, now. It's been going for one hour, eight minutes, so it's been a pretty long one. Um, so I'm, I will see you again next Thursday, same time, um, and we can have another chat. Don't forget this Sunday I'm doing that shoot in the studio with um, the seven models and four makeup artists doing glitter, and I think I'm going to be using continuous light. I will do some live broadcast to show you how it's going, and then obviously there'll be videos sort of coming uh, later on that will show you um, the full sort of thing done together but I will log in live to show you how the setup is and things like that so there'll be some short bursts of live um, YouTubing that I can show you and we can have a quick chat about what's going on there too so that'll be all day Sunday here uh, I think I'm starting pretty early so it's probably going to be sort of uh, midday uh, New York time things like that but you'll see it'll come up live um, yeah, most of you are saying thanks for talking live. Yeah, I really enjoy these live shoots, guys. It's great. Um, so have a look at that coming up. And obviously, I've got a few more shoots that I'll be posting with uh, this weekend shoot, uh, the autumn shoot that I've just done. Um, so yeah, that'll be uh, great to see you too. Thank you so much for the um, that money, Michael. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, any others before I log off? Uh, oh, this is way better than ham radio. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's been so much fun. I love these. I'll show you my setup and everything eventually too, because now I'm running multiple cameras and doing all different things. So um, I have been to the US. Uh, yep, I've been there twice. Um, I was there, I think, not last year, the year before. I went to Vegas, New York, and LA. Uh, I, I will come back again. Um, I think I'm going to go to the UK next year. Uh, I'm going to spend four weeks or so, I think, going around the UK, but um, I may bring uh, the US into that as well, because I'd love to have a meet up with you guys. Um, so hopefully I can do that too, um, or you guys ever come out here, make sure you um, give me a message, guys, because I'll uh, show you around Melbourne. Uh, I'd love to take you to a few spots to shoot. So if ever you are out this way, uh, give me a jingle and we can get together for a meet up as well. Um, well, we like, might leave it there. Um, so like I said, if you have any more questions, leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And um, thanks so much for a great um, talk, guys. <laughs> Take the shooter said Vegas is not the US. <laughs> what, what, what do they always say? What you do in Vegas stays in Vegas. See you, bye, guys. Bye.